Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Mindy Banks. I'm the Flip Flop Chef, and I'm so excited to have a special guest with me today, my friend B. She's with Shark Tooth Vodka. We are going to share crepes and cocktails with you today. So I'm really excited to share Crepe Suzette recipe. She's going to help me with that. She's much more experienced making crepes than <laughs> I am. And we're going to make a blood orange vodka spritzer. Delicious cocktail using Shark Tooth Vodka. So B, thank you so much for being here with me today. I would love for you to tell everybody about your vodka and about your business and where we can find it. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Hi guys. Uh, this is a Shark Tooth Vodka. We're using the blood orange. You can find it on the market also a premium version of it. It's made in Venice, Florida. All natural flavors, spring waters, uh, local corn. We do not add sugar. Um, since it's corn based, um, it's gluten free. Every bottle comes with a real shark tooth wired into a necklace. I love that. So it's a great souvenir. It's a great way to spend the evening and a great way to cook it with it. So you can find it in Total Wines from Port Charlotte to Tampa. You can find it in Venice, in the restaurants, in the liquor stores, Englewood, uh, Northport. So please follow us on Facebook, uh, go to our website, find our locations where we are. We are also in Virginia. So if you go to ABC website, you can order it from their website and pick it up at your local store. That is so cool. And so right now shipping's not available, but no. so they can get it locally if they're here in the, the Tampa, Sarasota, Port Charlotte, Florida area, yep. and also in Virginia. Is it all throughout Virginia or just in a certain part? So the whole Virginia. Awesome. So ABC stores? Yes. That is so cool. So cool. So I'm so excited to make these crepes and our cocktail here in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to use Pampered Chef's Deluxe Cooking Blender. And if you guys are new to my channel, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you'll be notified anytime I add new videos. And also make sure you look up Shark Tooth Vodka on your on Instagram. Where else are you? Facebook? Facebook, YouTube. Okay, yeah. so make sure that you subscribe to their channels too. I will link them um, with this video so that you can check it out. Be sure to let us know where you're watching from. We always like to know where people are watching from because yep. people watch from all over the world. Now tell us where you are from because we missed that part at the beginning. So you tell everybody where you're from and um, what, anything you want to share about yourself. Well, so I came from Poland only for a little bit to go to school. Met my husband, we got two kids, uh, moved a little bit uh, from Virginia to California, found our place in Venice. Uh, beautiful place to live, wake up every morning, see the waves and just the weather is perfect. So I think this is our forever home. Um, and we're just enjoying. That's great. Doing? It's my forever home too. I don't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to start off by making our crepes and then we're going to make our blood orange vodka spritzer. So if you're not familiar with Pampered Chef, I am a consultant with the company and I'd love the opportunity to be your consultant and help you purchase anything that you see in this video that you would like to add to your own kitchen. And so we're going to start off with our cooking blender. And so this is really cool. It's a, it's a smart blender. If you're not familiar with our appliances, I encourage you to check them out. I do have a whole playlist on my channel. I don't know if you've seen any videos yet with me using the blender but it's very cool so it's, it's a smart blender it's pre-programmed you can do everything that you could ever imagine with this you can make homemade nut milk you can grind flour you can grind nuts into peanuts or nut butters it's amazing of course you can use it like a regular blender which is what we're going to do today we're not doing anything fancy with it so we're going to add our ingredients into the blender container i'll attach it to our blender base we're going to make our um, crepe batter and then the recipe suggests that you refrigerate it so I have a batch already ready to go so we're going to switch over and use that one to make our crepes so yes I know it sounds so simple the way you explain <laughs> it I just cannot wait to see it in action oh I'm so actually, glad the two blondes we can <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to do great aren't we it's going to be awesome so we're going to add our eggs so I have five eggs and I went ahead and cracked these and just had them ready to go so we're going to pour our eggs in here and I prepped my ingredients in Pamper Chef's prep bowls. So these are our glass mixing bowls or glass prep bowls. They come in one cup, two cup, and three cup sizes. I love them because awesome. they're they're tempered glass and they also have their own lid. And they're dishwasher safe, um, both the lids and the bowls. And the bowls can go in the microwave, the dishwasher, of course the refrigerator and the freezer. But you can even use them in our quick cooker um, and our deluxe multi cooker. Those are the pressure cookers from Pamper Chef. Mm -hmm. And um, they're also oven safe. So I love, awesome. love the prep bowl. So we've got our five eggs. We're gonna add our milk. So I have one and three quarter cups of milk and I measured this in our easy read measuring cup. I don't know if you saw this, but you just look into the cup and you pour the milk and it rises on that plant. So you don't have to look through Perfect. the side. So this comes as a set of four. You have a quarter cup, one cup, two cup, 
and four cup. I had to think about that. I started to say three and I knew it wasn't right. I'm going to add a pinch of salt and I'm using Pampered Chef's Pink Himalayan Sea Salt. Now I grind my salt that comes in a bottle from Pampered Chef, actually grind it in the blender to get this awesome. nice fine salt. And then we're going to add some vanilla. Mm -hmm. This is Pampered Chef's Vanilla Extract. This is a seasonal product. So right now it's unavailable, but depending on when you're watching this video, it might be. We typically have this October through December. It is a double strength vanilla, but I tend to use the full amount from the recipe. So I could have just used a half a teaspoon, but I went ahead and added a, a whole teaspoon. You have to smell this. So it's amazing. Ooh, really <laughs> it is the best vanilla ever. If you can't get our vanilla extract when you're watching this video, I do have a couple of videos that show you how to make your own homemade vanilla extract. So you can make it in a pressure cooker using a pressure cooker setting, or if you have our deluxe multi cooker, you can make it using a sous vide setting, which is really cool. So you can make vodka, um, excuse me, um, I've got vodka on the brain. <laughs> vanilla is <laughs> a variety of different ways. Now I have a couple of tablespoons. I think this is three tablespoons of butter. We're going to pour that in and then I'm going to bring my blender over here and put the lid on it. That would be helpful. Yes. <laughs> we don't want the, well, the good thing about our blender is you actually, it, it won't work without the lid. So I'll show okay. you. So you see how it says lid right here. Mm -hmm. So it will not, you can't, you can't do anything until you close the lid and it gives you that fancy. And you know what, having two boys, that would be a perfect yes. place to have in the house. Because yes. I know they have ideas. They do, and we both have two boys, so we're, yeah. we have similar lives here. Now we could use custom settings, we could use um, just a blend setting, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just, uh, whoops, I'm gonna just use the pulse setting mm -hmm. instead. So you just push the pulse button. We're gonna pulse Tips you have for making crepes 
um, that people I like keep in mind. Them, I like them really thin. So okay. when the batter is more runny, you can make them thinner. Okay. So that's what I like to Okay. Fruit. Well, hopefully this batter is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this induction burner. And I, I'm going to turn this so that you have it's a little bit. Is that better for you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, um, and let me tell everybody about this pan before we get it hot. So this is our eight and a half inch um, non-stick stainless skillet. It's an mm -hmm. eight and a half inch size, so it's like an omelet pan or your egg pan. And it does come with a glass lid. These are a lifetime guarantee. So the lid and the pan have a lifetime guarantee. You can use them on the stovetop, of course. Mm -hmm. They're dishwasher safe. They're also oven safe. And they're metal safe. So if I wanted to take um, a, a, you know, like a, a hard spatula that's metal or something, I can actually use it in here and it's not going to scratch the pan. It's very, very cool. Um, we actually have several other sizes. So this is the eight and a half inch, very new to us, but it was very, very wildly uh, requested. So everybody wanted this size. We have a 10 inch, a 12 inch, and then we have a wok. So it's basically a 12 inch diameter, but it's a deep pot. So we're going to use the eight and a half inch, and you won't need the lid, right? No. Okay, so we're going to set love, the lid aside. I love the concept of being <laughs> able to use it on induction cooking, because yes. it's so hard to find the right it is. dishes to be able to cook properly on induction cooking. It is, and we have a couple of options for induction. So Hamburg Chef has the non-stick stainless line. We also have a cast iron line mm -hmm. and enamel cast iron. So the, the enamel basically just is cast iron with a pretty coating on it, mm -hmm. but they both can be used on induction, and that's what I have in my kitchen too. Perfect. So I've had to learn all the things that I can yep. use on induction. <laughs> so, all right, so what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and heat this up, and um, why don't I increase this? I just learned today that I have a, a buttons to increase the temperature. I thought I had to just use low, medium, or high, so I'm really glad we can adjust the temperature just a little bit. And then we're gonna butter the pan, and then we're gonna use about a quarter cup, which is about four tablespoons, of batter to make our crepes and and this is our little easy read um, measuring cup and so we're going to use that to scoop this out so whenever you're ready I'm going to let um, B make these crepes for us and we're going to use our silicone fish spatula and the fish spatula is not quite available but it launches hopefully on July 1st. That's when we're hoping to launch this line of products. So those of you that have been waiting, we tried to launch them in the spring, but they weren't quite ready, but they're going to be here very, very soon. So I'm going to set this here so that you have that. And I'm going to get a couple of things here. Um, put my lid out of the way. And if you need to adjust that temperature mm -hmm. at all, you just do you just do your thing. I don't want to um, <laughs> mess with that at all. No, I'll, um, I'll mess it up myself. Okay. Do you always <laughs> end up throwing away the first one? Usually, Okay, yeah. so I do that too. So it's just like when you're making pancakes, the first one is just junk. Yep. <laughs> so if that happens today, then it's a real life video, just like if we were doing this in our kitchens, right? So um, I love this pan, and I love that fish spatula too. So it's when very we're flexible, isn't which is, it? Makes it easy to pick it up. Yep. So easy. Um, and this, you want to you want to wait for it to bubble a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But not like a pancake. Right. Because if you wait too long, then it's just going to burn the bottom. True. So you want some bubbles, but not lots of bubbles. Yep. Okay. Very good. I'm going to zoom in so everybody can kind of see what you're doing there. It's such a great pan. If it's not cooked. Long yeah, he's not ready. He's not ready. ready. But yeah. yeah. So I always say there is a little bit of an art to making crepes, right? <laughs> so um, if you've never made crepes before, the first time you make them, it is yeah. going to be trial and error. So don't panic if the first couple don't turn out the way that you want them to be. You can still eat them. <laughs> they yeah. just aren't, maybe aren't going to be as pretty as the third, fourth, fifth, and tenth one that you make. Look at that. Perfect. Well, the first one is broken. That's okay. It will get better. It does get better. And I think oh, it's almost like your pan has to warm up too to the crisps. Yeah. <laughs> and then just that bottom needs to. Yeah. You know, it will get the right temperature. Yep. So I know on my stovetop, um, when I use this on my regular stovetop, I had it set to a number five, which is like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to kind of get to that with this burner here. And if you don't know this trick, just stick a fork in the cold pat of butter, and it makes it really Perfect. easy to just kind of run that around the pan. And so um, we'll have this for um, the crepe, and then we have some for serving, because we get to eat these. That's the best thing about <laughs> cooking these, making these videos is we get to cook them. So while you are making a couple more crepes, I'm going to talk about a couple of other things. So um, I know that I like putting um, 
uh, whipped cream on my crepes. And B said that in Europe you guys like things less sweet. Yes. Okay, so she wouldn't put whipped cream on there. But if you guys know me, I like things sweet. So <laughs> I would like to put whipped cream on mine. I think it would taste amazing. And actually, I, I usually do put whipped cream on my crepes when I make them. But there are so many different ways that you can make crepes. So you've done Nutella and strawberries. What are some other fillings that you have made? You done any savory fillings? So you can put uh, jello in it, but also you can make crepes with spinach inside. Okay. Or I um, brown mushrooms and uh, okay. saute onions with it and put it inside Sounds and so roll good. it in. And then um, kind of in like an envelope size, mm -hmm. um, I put it in a um, egg and then breadcrumbs and I brown it again. Oh. And then you can serve it with Barsht, which is the beet soup or any other kind of uh, okay. broth or yeah. Okay, see I'm learning all these new things <laughs> here today. So that is great. So I've made mine with like eggs and sausage and bacon. Do we need to toss this one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so the first one is just junk, right? So we're oh, going to toss oh, that nice. in the trash and then see that one already looks better. I can tell. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be great. All right, so to make whipped cream, I made this ahead of time in Pampered Chef's whipped cream maker, so I'm just going to kind of give you guys um, a little quick rundown of what I did. So this has the storage lid here, but it also doubles as a little no-skid gripper, mm -hmm. so that it keeps it from slipping and sliding around on the countertop. So I put some powdered sugar, vanilla flavoring, and heavy whipping cream inside the container, and then you just lock the lid on there, and you just pump, pump, pump for about 30 seconds, and you have this beautiful whipped cream. Perfect. So you don't need, like... You know, you don't have to freeze your mixing bowl and your um, whisks and all of those things ahead of time. You can just pour it right in and go. See how beautiful this is, you guys? I'll show you guys. So look at this beautiful crepe. So we're going to make a few more of those, and then we'll save the rest of the batter, yep. and we'll make some more later, but then we're going to make the Suzette sauce. So you can tell me. I know because I've had crepe Suzette before, so I know that it's, does that mean orange, Suzette? Where, do you know where that origin of that word, the name, came from? No. Okay, I don't either. But I will tell you, the first time I ever had Crepe Suzette was on a Pampered Chef incentive trip. So it was my first trip with Pampered Chef. It was in 2000, so my going into my second year with Pampered Chef, and we were in Montreal, Canada, mm -hmm. and they had, like, this big food festival. And I was the only one that wanted to go to the food festival. Everybody else went to the botanical gardens, and I'm like, well, bye. I'm going <laughs> to the food festival. I'm going to follow the food. And I had the best crepe Suzette ever um, at that food festival, and I've loved crepes ever since, and there is a place, have you been to Bonjour in Siesta Key? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's one of my favorite breakfast places, so Josephine, if you're watching, hello, um, she's our server there, and she's great, but that's a place locally for our friends here, they can go and, or if they don't want to make their own crepe Suzette, they can go, and they make theirs with Grand Marnier, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to make our new vodka today, because yeah. um, you have this amazing blood orange vodka, it smells Ooh. so good, I cannot wait to actually taste this. It's going to be awesome. So we're going to make our crepe Suzette sauce um, with, or our Suzette sauce, not crepe Suzette, but um, with some butter, some flour. We're going to zest some oranges and we're going to juice them too. So um, I'm going to cheat and look at my recipe here. And we've got our vodka already measured out. So while we're, we're going to maybe, let's do two more crepes. Yeah. And then we'll work on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by zesting. So we need the zest and the juice from two oranges. Now, I would have liked to use blood oranges, but I couldn't find them. So we're going to just use regular oranges. Usually, I can find them at all these, but in this crazy world we live in, you never know what you can get. So, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use this juicer and zester. I'm going to zoom in so everybody can see this better. And the really cool thing about this is it has a zester piece that fits on the top, and then it has this, I put it on backwards, it has this sure. juicer. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to put the zester part over the top, and I'm going to zest both of these oranges. And then we'll juice them right on top of the zest, and it makes it easier to pour both of those. I don't think we need to keep these separate. Let me just double check. No, we don't need to keep them separate. Every once in a while there's a recipe where the zest needs, you need some like for a garnish, but I have plenty of oranges if you need to, to garnish it with it. Awesome, the smell of it, using the natural, the fruit. Isn't and it amazing? Is awesome. Do you use zest in your um, vodka? Or do you just use, how do you, so it might be secret. We do use <laughs> natural flavors, natural. we use the blood oranges, we crush them into big machines, and then we oh. zest a little bit 
because blood orange in, in their nature are a little bitter, especially the skins. Okay. Right. We combine the zest of blood orange grapefruit and lime oh. to just mellow it down a little bit, and the sweetness all comes from the fruit and from the local corn. Okay, so. I love that. See, I'm learning so much. All right, so we're gonna zest the other, and so like you were talking about, it can get really bitter, and so mm -hmm. you wanna make sure you don't grate the white pith. You wanna just grate the color. I'm gonna zest two of these, and then we're gonna juice them. And so I love this juicer because it makes it so easy to do that. I'm so I'm gonna one this. more. Yeah, one more crepe, and then we'll add these. We'll make our little sauce here. All right, excuse me. Um, we're going to cut the oranges in half, and I'm going to switch out to, so instead of the zester, I'm going to use the juicer. And this is just like your traditional juicer, so. Is that measuring cup comes with the set? It does. Awesome. It's, it's just a perfect size for the It is. Drink. If you yep. remind me, I may have one, I'll give it to you. Just remind me, and I'll awesome. look in my, my stash before you leave. It's we'll have it on the video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to just juice these. Now, if you have um, oranges, you know, any citrus fruit that is, that it feels really, really hard, like it would be hard to squeeze it yourself with your hands, mm -hmm. you can actually microwave your citrus fruit for about 30 seconds, and it releases more juice from the fruit. Awesome. Isn't that cool? And I love this juicer because it catches the pulp on the top here. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. So we can toss that in the trash. So we have that ready to go. So for our sauce, we need half a cup of unsalted butter. So that's just a stick of butter. We'll put that in the pan in just a minute. And then we're going to have the powdered sugar, the zest, and juice from two oranges, which we have here. And then we've got four tablespoons of blood orange vodka. I'm going to give you guys a close-up look. Check out this bottle. So they're beautiful bottles, but look, you get this shark tooth necklace um, with every single bottle. So do you go find these shark teeth yourself? So in the beginning when we started the journey, we actually went on Venice Beach and started yeah. finding it. Since then, the, when the volume picked up, we actually had to find other sources. So okay. we um, work with Captain Gill. Um, hello. Uh, <laughs> where is he? Is he in Venice? He's in Venice. Okay. Uh, he goes on his uh, charter boat and he finds a lot of feet for us and then okay. we hire a couple of women that sit and wire them perfectly and put them on a necklace so we can then... I love that. And every them. every single bottle, and she brought two necklaces so that my boys would each get one, so they're going to love that. We love going to Casperson mm -hmm. and going shark tooth hunting. We do that. And so this is kind of like <laughs> a shark tooth finding for adults. There is okay. no scent. You go to the liquor store and everything <laughs> yeah. are different so you can pick the perfect one. That is so cool. I love that. That's such a cool concept. It's a, little, it's a really special touch um, to your brand. Yep. So I love that. All right. So when we're done with that, I'm going to just wash that pan out. What do you think about the pan? Awesome. It, it doesn't, doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. And it's, you know, I like heavy pans. Uh, because usually they cook the best. Mm -hmm. This one is not that it's heavy, not. but it cooks just as perfect. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. So I love this. Um, I don't know. Some of you guys watching have seen Connor's video. He makes, he likes to make chocolate chip cookies, like giant chocolate chip cookies mm -hmm. in there. So he pushes the dough in and puts it in the oven. And so he has one big giant cookie and he drizzles chocolate syrup over the whole thing. <laughs> and if you want to put ice cream on it, you can do that too. See, mm -hmm. we like sweets around here. <laughs> oh, I like sweets too. <laughs> so, well, that's great. All right, so when we're done with that, we're going to mix. Um, I'm just cheating on my recipe. So we're going to put the butter and sugar in our pan on low. And then we're going to just basically just stir until the sugar begins to dissolve. And then we're going to, it says, increase the heat to medium, allow it to thicken. And then we're going to add the vodka, the blood mm -hmm. orange vodka. And, and then are we, we're going to flambe this, right? So yep. we're going to light it on fire. So that's going to be lots of fun to do. So very cool. Um, if you have any questions about anything that we talked about in this video, please make sure that you leave comments. I'll be sure to answer them after the video. And if you don't already like Shark Tooth Vodka on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to all those things because I know there's great things coming and you're not going to want to miss all the, the fun things that are happening. Yeah. So lots of great, exciting things. And we're going to make a cocktail, so just hang tight just a little bit longer. We're almost ready to flip this crepe. We're going to melt our butter, make our sauce, and plate these crepes and show you guys how to make a cocktail. So, B, do you have any questions about anything? 
for me. Not yet. So okay. Very simple, very easy. So just looking forward to try it. Good. Oh yeah, me too. That's the best part. So I feel sorry for everybody watching because they have to make them <laughs> to yep. be able to try them. They can't smell it. They can't taste it. They have to just make it on their own. So, all right. So we've got our juice. I think and might be good here. Yeah. And these pans um, are so easy to, do you think we need to wash that, rinse it out these quickly, or is it good the way it is? I think it's good. Okay, then let's go. Here's your butter. So we'll melt the butter do and... You want the whole stick in it? Do what now? The whole stick? Yes. The whole stick. A little's good, a lot's better, right? <laughs> All right. So we're going to use our butter and then we're going to dissolve that. I'm going to increase that just a little bit. We'll start melting that and then we're going to add the powdered sugar, which I have right here. So I'm going to move a couple things out of the way. So do you have another mixing utensils for the yes. pan? Yes. Do you? Oh yeah, we have all kinds. What do you want for this? Kind of like a spoon type of yes. thing. Yes. It's going to be easier to just mix it through. Is this one? Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we'll swap. And that's safe for cooking, right? Yes, it is. It's silicone. Awesome. Yep. So we set this aside. And we'll be ready to make our Do you want me to add the powdered sugar already? Yes. So let's go right ahead. I'm so excited about this. We've talked about doing this for a while. Yep. Um, we met at, so those of you who are local, we'll give a little shout out to the Twig. Um, I found out about the Twig through another one of my customers, Kathy, thank you for um, mentioning them on my page so that we were able to do a fundraiser for them. And then that led to being invited to their, what do they call it? Yes, gala, thank you. And so they did this big fundraising gala for the Twig. And the Twig is an organization, they're located in Venice and in Lakewood Ranch. I actually passed mm -hmm. that uh, yesterday when I went to pick my kids up from church camp. I was like, oh, now I know where the other location is. But they provide clothing um, and other, like shoes, clothing. Accessories. For, yes, everything. It's basically mm -hmm. like a clothing store. And they offer um, ch uh, families who are fostering to bring their foster children into the store and um, shop. And how, do, do you know the details? Like they get to come in like once a month or something? So... I actually I volunteer at the Venice location, uh -huh. and it's a great way. A lot of those kids come with really not much yeah. to a foster family, and they come from families where they didn't necessarily have a lot, mm -hmm. so that's the best way for them to come. Uh, it's a very exclusive boutique, so they feel like come mm -hmm. to a beautiful store. Mm -hmm. They get to pick seven pieces of clothing. We have books. We have... Uh, Bibles, we have motivation yeah. things, we have bike helmets, so every month they can come once a month, pick shoes or you know That's maybe awesome. toiletries or or socks or clothing that they like. We have teddy bears and Aww. everything is packed really nicely and given to them in a bag and they proud and happy that they can. Yeah. And we we happy to have them as part of our family. That's awesome. That's awesome. And they also um, offer shopping and help to children who grow out. Like they, they are too old for the foster care system. So they are now adults and they help them with life skills and things like that. So I think it's really a great organization overall. And a lot of you guys watching actually helped me provide a bunch of chili kits. So I think it was 25, if I remember correctly, 25 chili kits. I don't know if you saw this, but we, we have a bag full of ingredients for them to give to the children who've outgrown or um, aged out, I think is the term that they yeah. use. Yeah, you know, the program for the aged out kids is really awesome because they teaching, Twig is teaching them all the life skills. So we had a tax person coming and talk to them about oh, taxes. Awesome. We had a class for, with uh, crock pots to oh, teach them simple that. recipes to have, be able to cook for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so different classes I that teach it. them life skills. I love, I love all the things um, that they're doing there. So make sure you check out the Twig, donate to them. It's a great organization here in Venice and in Lakewood Ranch. So mm -hmm. how are we looking on this? Are we ready for the uh, orange juice? I or would say, yep. Let's see, it says, Okay, it says we want to wait for that to caramelize a little. Does it, do you feel like it's there yet, or do we... Well, maybe we have to... Maybe a little bit more. Yep. So we're going to let that caramelize, and then we're going to add in the orange juice and the zest, and we're going to let that thicken a little bit, then we're going to add this vodka. So while we wait for that, uh, we're just going to keep moving. I'm going to get things set up here for our cocktail, and then we'll get that. That'll be our next thing on the agenda here. Okay. 
I'm going to turn that just a bit more. Yes. You're in charge. I'm letting you take charge of that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> B said, are you, so I'm we cooking. Have, we, we don't have enough vodka. <laughs> yeah, it's all, I was asking her if she wanted to, to man the, the skillet, and um, she said, so I'm cooking, and I'm like, if, you, if you're comfortable with that. <laughs> so you're doing a great job, by the way. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Now, I do recommend when you're making cocktails, especially if you're doing any muddling um, or any pounding or anything, you're going to want a bar mat, so I always just have that out. Um, I learned that from my friend Jeff Ferris, so Jeff, if you're watching, um, thanks for teaching me all the things that I need to know about making cocktails. So I've got some fun glasses, and I'll get all of our ingredients over here, and then I'll tell you guys a little bit more about this while we're waiting. Oh, see, that looks good. Yep. All right. And let me grab, I have some orange juice bombs in the freezer. So I used our silicone egg bite mold to freeze. This is just orange juice. Um, you can put some vodka in here too if you wanted to, but these are just, just orange juice and we can pop them into our drinks, our cups, when we pour the drink over the top. Perfect. So I'll show everybody how you this works. You can even put a little fruit inside you of could. it to make it perfect. You could. Mm -hmm. You can put like a little orange in there or strawberries. Yep. But see, these just pop right out. Perfect. Isn't that cool? So we'll set this aside. I'll keep them in there. I might want to put the rest of the things in it. All right. So let's pour, Here, let me turn it down a little bit, I don't want it to bubble over oh, on you, it smells so good. <laughs> Alright, all that zest, oh it smells so good, mm -hmm. I love that. Alright, and then um, you just let me know when you're ready to um, add the vodka. And so this just says to, we're going to let it thicken. So while that's thickening, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this cocktail. So for this cocktail, we're going to use the blood orange vodka, and we're going to measure that out in our jigger, which comes as part of our cocktail set. So the cocktail set comes with um, the cup, so it's two pieces. You have a strainer, mm -hmm. and then this is your jigger, and this is twice as large as most jiggers that come with cocktail sets. So Sounds this is like actually it's coming from Poland. <laughs> <laughs> two ounces instead of one. Um, it also comes with a little swivel spoon, and we have a muddler, which I failed to get out, but if you watch some of my other videos, you'll be able to check out the muddler in that. So we're going to use our cocktail shaker set, we're going to measure out our vodka, and we're going to double this recipe so that we have two cocktails here. And uh, this recipe calls for a rosemary simple syrup. So simple syrup is so easy to make, but a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. what that actually is. They don't know how to make it, but it's basically just sugar water. That's all that simple syrup is. And if you want to flavor it, you can add in fresh herbs. So I've made a basil simple syrup before, and this is a rosemary. So I didn't make a lot. Um, I made enough for maybe six drinks. Um, you just boil the water and the sugar, and then you add your rosemary sprigs after you take it off of the heat and just let it steep for a little while. Mm -hmm. When it comes to room temperature, remove the rosemary and then pour through a funnel into a glass jar. I do have another video that I made when I made this yesterday so that I can share it with you guys if you're like, okay, that sounds easy, but I need to, to see it. Some people are really, they just have to see it or have somebody, you know, walk them through it. And so yep. that'll be a separate video. We didn't really have time to incorporate that into this video today. So I've gone ahead and measured out. So you need one, one um, ounce per cocktail. So we've got two ounces of the rosemary simple syrup already measured out. We are going to use the um, orange LaCroix sparkling water. Mm -hmm. So you could just use regular club soda or regular sparkling water, but I had orange and I was like, we're going to do that because we're just going to get add more and more and more orange flavor yep. to this. And I failed to get my ice out of the freezer before we started. So I'm going to grab some ice. How is that looking? Awesome. Is it starting to thicken up? Yep, it's starting to boil. Thicken up. Good. Even though these were made for hot foods, you mm -hmm. can put cold foods in there. It won't stay cold as long as hot foods stay hot, mm -hmm. but it's still great, especially if you're um, doing a video. <laughs> you need the yep. ice to stay frozen until you're ready for it. So, as I mentioned before, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, go to theflipflopchef.com and click the button at the top so you can join my recipe community. I have thousands of recipes, more videos, and also a weekly giveaway every single Friday. Just look for the Flip Flop Friday post and you're going to be able to win Fun Pampered Chef every single week. So um, we're going to wait a little bit on that. Are we waiting a little? Mm -hmm. okay. a little bit. You let me know when you're ready, 
and I'll stop wherever I am. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work on making this cocktail. So for this cocktail, we need, um, where's my jigger? Oh, it's right here. So we're going to do, the recipe calls for one and a half ounces of the vodka. We're going to, so that means we're going to double this. We're going to do three ounces. And this is a two ounce jigger. So I'm going to do two ounces first. And then we'll do another. And if you want to do this, do two, two, and two. You could if you like. We'll follow the recipe today. We're going to set this aside, and I'm going to uh, juice some more oranges because we need more oranges. Where did I? Oh, here. I knew I left that out. Anyone need to put, to put the vodka inside? Are you ready to? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think we're good. Okay. You go right ahead. I'm going to zoom in on you. So you tell us what you're doing now. I'm putting the blood orange vodka in the orange sauce. And do you know how to use the torch? You tell me when you're ready for that. Oh my gosh, that smells good. It smells so good. All right, I'll let you use the torch. Okay, is it ready for right now? All right, so we're going to use this um, torch here. So I'm just going to pull this down and let's see. Try to pop it. Yep. Can you guys see that? Hopefully they can see that on the video. That's so cool. And how long do you let it, do you turn the heat off at this point, or do we leave it for just a minute or two? You can turn it off, and you can just burn the alcohol off it so okay. that only the flavor stays. Okay, and then if you burn the alcohol off, then you can serve this to your kids too, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. All right, so while we get that finished up, we are going to finish up our cocktail too. So whenever this is totally ready, do you want to... Plated. I think it's good, yeah. Okay, so but should I turn the this fire off? Stop. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Do you pour it over um, and fold it, or do you fold it first? How do you do it? So you can fold it first, oh, and show. then you can pour it over it. Usually what I do when I fold it, uh, I put it actually on a baking dish. Okay. I fold it, I put the syrup on it, and I bake it just for a little bit. Oh, that's such a great idea because then, like now, these are not really warm anymore because right. you let them sit. So that's a good way. So you fold it um, two times. So I fold it in half, mm -hmm. and I fold it half more time. And like you put them in a casserole dish. Yes. Oh, well, we could have done that. Okay. So and then you just lay them all out. And I and put the sauce on top okay. of it. Put a little bit more zest, fresh zest on okay. top of it. Put it in the oven for 15-20 minutes. And okay. Perfect. I love that. Okay, great. So can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. I'll make sure to post a link to the recipe that I use in my guide, and you guys can make these at home. But let's finish up our cocktail. So we need some more oranges. So for this recipe, we need three ounces of um, fresh squeezed oranges. So I feel like we're going to need three or four of these. I keep moving things, and then I don't see where I put them. Do you see my knife? It's hiding from me. Let me grab another one. I know I have a knife out. Oh, here it is. Where did I put it? <laughs> I went farther today than I usually go. So we're going to juice these. Do you want to try? Yep. Yeah. I'll let you juice. And, and I'm going to also go ahead and cut two thin slices to garnish our drink. I found these fun cups, um, these glasses at Home Goods, and, or no, Marshalls. And I thought that would be perfect for this recipe. So that's what we're going to do there. And we're going to use another Easy Read measuring cup to measure this out. So since we're doubling this, we're going to need six ounces. You want to pour that in here and we'll see how much we have. Yep. Um, we're going to just pour and fill to that six ounce. We might need another. Oh, yep. almost there. Do this one and I think we'll have enough. And then we're going to pour the orange juice on top of, so we have ice and vodka in our shaker. We're going to add the orange juice. And then I've got our simple syrup, so I'm going to go ahead and pour that rosemary simple syrup in. I would not leave that out. That rosemary gives this such a great, great flavor. Perfection. So we're going to pour this in. And make sure we didn't forget anything. We have vodka, orange juice, simple syrup. Okay, great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the top of our shaker cup. We're going to put this right on the side. So you put this at an angle, and the reason that you do this at an angle is so that you um, don't create suction. If you were to okay. just put this straight down, it would suction together, and it's going to be really hard to get off. Um, whenever you're shaking, make sure you have your hand on the bottom, ha hand on the bottom, and hand on the top, so you have control of both pieces. And then you just shake, shake, shake. When your hand gets cold. And you know you're shaking it up, right? Yep. 
Now you can serve this, just pour that pour it with the ice out. Oops. Mm -hmm. See, I got a little suction there, and I just went at an angle. See, I told you, it says pampered, not perfect. Every every no. video. <laughs> Let's take our orange. Um, instead of using the ice there, we're gonna put our little orange bomb in here. I haven't loosened that one yet. And then we're gonna put our strainer on the top. Pour this. My kitchen smells so good right now. <laughs> All these, this orange flavor, I love it. And you know, you don't necessarily have oh. to do the crepes for breakfast and a drink for breakfast. You will have Correct, you can. Yeah. I forgot we're adding something else, so I need to split this between the two. We're gonna add our sparkling water. So this is orange, but you could use other flavors or just plain. I'm gonna pour that. And this. And I'm just gonna cut a little slit in Perfect. our slice. And I think, you know what I want to do is I want to put a little sprig of rosemary in here. So that we have some of that hiding in here. Fresh herbs always go awesome yes. with the drinks. So we'll just toss, and it just makes it so pretty. Aren't they so pretty? Very. Oh, love that. So we'll have to get a picture of that. So if you'd like to try it, you can. I'll save mine for later on, and we'll put these back in the freezer, and these, my kids will actually probably want just orange bombs with orange yep. juice, <laughs> or even by themselves, so if you have any questions about anything that we did today, or anything else you want to share with everybody? No, I just like how easy it is, how easy it is to even follow the recipe that you just, you know, it's so easy. communicate everything, and everything that we used today, I, I definitely would find a use for it. Good. Good. Thank I'm you. so glad. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I so appreciate you joining me today. It's always fun to have a guest. I told B, she's my first guest since I moved to Florida. I've been here two years ago yesterday, and so you're my first guest. I told her this island is set up differently than my kitchen in Georgia, so I was like, we're going to have to kind of figure out, but I yeah. feel like this works. This is a good, it's a good space. So stay tuned for more guests in my kitchen, and don't forget to get your shark tooth vodka when you are in the Sarasota and surrounding areas, or if you're in Virginia, you can get it at the agency yep. stores, and be sure to stay tuned for more from both me, Flip Flop Chef, and be with Shark Tooth Vodka. Thank you. So thank you so much. Yeah, cheers. 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 See you guys next time. Take care. Bye.